minutes, I wanted to take some time and discuss your lab reports that are due on Tuesday of next week. Um, if you go through and go to the calendar, and if you look on Friday's dates, on Friday there is a link that says types of chemical reactions lab report details. So if you click on that, this will come up. This goes through the entire format that I've put together for the lab report, but really it's the red parts that are important. Okay? So I will make sure we highlight the red parts. So things that you need to include. Okay? First, it's got to have a header. Ooh, that's not what I want. Okay. It's got to have a header. There we go. The header is pretty easy. You know, group names, period title of the report, stuff like that. Okay. Next, it has to have a problem statement. If you look at the parts in red, those are the parts that are going to tell you about what you need to include and things you need to think about as you're writing it up. So the red part says, what was this lab about? How does it relate to our current unit on chemical reactions? So addressing those things, you should be able to come up with a question that relates to this lab. Why were we doing it? What were we looking to answer? Okay. Now, were we really doing any research and trying to find something new? No, but there was a purpose for us doing it. Okay. What question were we trying to answer? And that's what I want you guys to come up with. It's not necessarily that there's only one acceptable question. Look at, like it says, what was the lab about and how does it relate to our current unit? That will help. Chris, go ahead. If you write it, you don't have to answer A, B, C. Like, for, no, for, like, for this part specifically, okay, we'll talk a little bit later, there are parts that, yeah, you can break them up, like, for this experiment, this experiment, this experiment, we'll talk about that specifically in a second, okay, but for this part, for the problem statement, I want you to look at the big picture, like, what was the lab about totally, not necessarily each individual part, what was the whole lab about. All right, next section, literature review. Literature review is background information that you needed to answer the questions relating to the lab, make conclusions about the observations that you saw, things like that. Okay. Things that you should include. First, what's chemical reaction? What happens during chemical reaction? How do you know it's happening? Next. Balanced equations, why is it important that equations are balanced? Difference between coefficients and subscripts. Third, types of chemical reactions. What's the general format for each type of chemical reaction? These are all things you should include. Now, here's the trick. Okay? I don't want, okay, there are, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight question marks in that little red section right there. That does not mean that your literature review needs to be eight sections or eight sentences long. Right? You don't have to I don't I don't want you just to go through and go boom, 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 answer this question, answer the next one. I want you to weave it into a coherent paragraph. Okay? Those things need to be addressed but it's not, your, it's not an answering question. So you're trying to weave that into a cohesive paragraph that explains to me, okay, we started off with a reaction. This is what a reaction is. It's actually has to be balanced because blah, blah, blah. You go from there. Allison, go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Why is that stuff in red? The what red is? things are the stuff that applies to this lab specifically. That, so if we were doing the lab report in a different lab, the red parts would change. You'll see that. So the red part applies to this type of chemical reaction lab specifically. Okay. And then um, also, so like, like right next to that, like literature review. Yep. Even though we both like weave it through and like make it all like into one, so it's one big paragraph. For the literature like, review, all. yes. Okay. Now, uh, the next part of your the next part of your lab report. Is the procedure section. Okay. For the procedure section, 
it says each small experiment should have a separate paragraph explaining what was done. So in this section, you can have four small paragraphs. Okay. The we did two synthesis reactions, but the procedure was basically the same for both of them, right? The magnesium and the copper, you basically did the same thing, okay? But for this section, you can put, make them four small paragraphs relating to each of the four different experiments that we did. Okay. Okay. All right. Also, on the procedure section, okay, remember, it's a story about what you did in the lab. It's not a recipe for what you made. Okay? It's not a step-by-step. -step. First I did this, then I did this, then I did this. Okay? Make it into a... We started off by obtaining a piece of magnesium. Using the tongs, we held the magnesium in the hottest part of the burner flame. Then we looked for signs of reaction. Okay? That's not get magnesium. Hold magnesium with tongs. Put magnesium in the hottest part of the burner flame. It's not a bullet point list. Okay? Does that help? It says that here. Okay. Okay. But it's not, it's not a bullet point list. It's not what I want. I want it to be a short paragraph explaining to me, telling me the story about what you did in that section of the lab. Okay? Sometimes that story has to be a little bit longer, depending on what part of the lab you're doing. But, Austin, like we just discussed, I want a brief paragraph for each separate section. Okay. Questions procedure-wise? Next, sketch. Okay. You can have a, or not you can't, you should have a separate picture for each section of the lab that you did. Okay. If you want, the equipment is still available, okay? If you want to take actual pictures, that's fine, and you can include them in your lab report, that's okay. If you just want to make a little sketch, that's fine too, but make sure that if you, I don't want you to leave a space in your lab report and draw me in pencil, like what the thing looks like. If you want to make a picture and scan it in and include that as part of it, that's okay, but there should be no handwriting on your lab. Yes, sir. You can, you can, you know, so if you want to, like, if you want to include the pictures, like, with the paragraphs, that's okay. Or if you want to include the pictures separately afterwards, that's okay, too. Okay? Yeah, you know, you know, you, or, you, or you could say, like, for this section of the sketches, you know, sketch for decomposition reaction, and then you just put the picture there. Or if you want to put the picture next to the paragraph that you're writing, that would work as well. This is your chance to sort of, you know, I'll let you do whatever you want there, as long as you include both a written procedure, but also a picture as well. Okay? Allison, go ahead. So like for each paragraph, uh -huh. like, do you want to put like an actual title to it and then go in, like, it, like put you can, the you, and then put You can, you can want, that's fine. Yeah. Well, topic sentence, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be so concerned about like your paragraph structure. Like whether you have an intro sentence and a conclusion sentence, okay. But for the procedure section, you can break up your description for each of the four labs, for each of the four separate parts. Okay, okay? but you can put like procedure like bigger and like bolder and sure. stuff like that. Yeah. Like each year. That's fine. Yes. Okay. Right. Or if you you know if you want to say you know if you want to put procedure big and bold, right? If you want to like you know write procedure. Or put over and put it in caps and underline it or something, okay? And then you can write like, you know, synthesis and then give me your your description there. Okay? And then you can write, you know, like decomposition and then write me there, okay? Or if you want to like do it as a separate paragraph, you know, you're like in the synthesis reaction. And you can like underline or bold synthesis or whatever. Somehow that's fine too. Okay? Just separate parts for each of the four different labs. How do you show that? I'll leave that up to you. Okay, but you, you know, they, they should be separated somehow. Good so far? Alright, so we went through procedure, we went through sketch. Okay. The next section. 
Data and observations. Data and observations. You can make this as a chart if you want to. Left hand column, name of the lab that we did. Right hand column, show me these things. Include observations from before, during, and after the reaction and explain how they indicate that a chemical reaction occurred. So tell me what this stuff looked like before your experiment. Tell me what happened during your experiment. Tell me what you saw after the experiment. Does that make sense? And this is all just observation stuff. It's all we did in this lab. Okay. Good there? You'll like the next part. Calculations? You didn't had you didn't have any calculations, so don't worry about the calculations part. Don't even write none for this lab. Just don't include it. Graphs? Same thing. Okay? You didn't make any graphs. Don't include it in your lab report. Like I said, nothing if you're you know separating them out by section. Don't write graphs done for this lab report. Just don't put them in leave on there. Next. Error analysis. Generally, error analysis goes into problems with our measurements, but we didn't make any measurements in this lab. The only thing we did was observations. There's not really any error that you make when you're observing something. Measuring, yeah, okay, but really you were just observing things here, so you, you don't have to worry about error analysis for this part. Okay? Don't do it. All right, next. The conclusion statements. Oh, once again. A separate paragraph for each lab. You can break your conclusion statement up into separate paragraphs for each experiment. Within each paragraph, you have to do the following thing. Explain how your observation showed that a reaction was occurring. That's first. You know, how did we know that a reaction was actually occurring? Second, a balanced chemical equation for each reaction. Balanced chemical equation for each reaction. Third, Based on the reactants and the products for that experiment, what you saw first, what you saw at the end, how did you know that you were looking at this type of a reaction? How did the, what your reactants for the magnesium look like before and after indicate that that was a synthesis reaction? Those three parts for each of the four experiments. Like I said, the two synthesis reactions are pretty simple. And then last, comment section, optional. If you have something you want to throw in there relating to this lab, right? You don't want to make comments about how your test should be worth 17,000 more points than they are, right? Relating to this lab. Oh, yeah. Oh. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, the remainder of class you had. You did take a little while. You did take a while on your quid. It was supposed to feel like five minutes. So, oh, hey, wait, one last thing. Okay? Hey, one last thing. All right? As far as the lab, the actual lab write-up that I gave you in class, okay, you do not have to turn that in. You don't necessarily have to answer all of the questions that are in there. However, answering all of those questions will help you writing things like the conclusion statement and the observation section. Okay? So you don't have to turn that section in, but if you do it, might help. Okay? Trust
minutes before I stop recording. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Oh, I will also, I will also post in the relation that I will also post online. I did take short little videos of what each of them looked like. So if you're not, if you can't quite remember it, I'll try and put those up so you can take a look at them. Tuesday. So if you have questions Monday, ask them then. You can go there.